Welcome to The Beautiful Bag. This is your host, Leanne Hayden, cancer survivor, and more importantly, ostomy lifer. Each and every week, I'm going to be bringing a special guest or some inspiration for you and a few little stories along the way so that you can learn what life is like for us to be living in an ostomy and why we all think it's a beautiful bag. So listen in and let's get started. These testimonials are representative of my or our experiences, but the exact results and experience will be unique and individual to each person. The information provided herein is not medical advice and is not intended to substitute for the advice. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's The Beautiful Bag podcast. It's been a while since I have had an interview on here, and Cody had reached out to me while I was in Italy, and it took a little bit to uh, for us to get connected, but uh, Cody Marr has been, um, you know, she, she is in her ostomy, and she has such a great story, and I'm not going to share it. I'm going to let her share it, but Cody, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Leanne. I really appreciate you having me. Oh, and I really appreciate you reaching out. You know, it's, um, it's, it's, I love when I turn on my email um, and I have a message from someone saying, Hey, I love your, I love your show. I listen to your podcast. And I have a story. And I'm like, yes, I love it because everybody has a story and everybody's story is just a little bit different, mm-hmm. but we're all in the same situation. So mm-hmm. um, it was really exciting getting your, getting your email. So thanks for reaching out. Oh yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. I think, you know, the community aspect has been such a big healer in my life in this realm and others of course and so I just I'm always excited to have these connections and to share with more people so hopefully people feel less alone in whatever they're going through it really is you said a keyword right there community right yeah. it's um it's the thing I think all of us and and feel is when we're going through this in the beginning we're all by ourselves mm. you yeah. know 100 percent and social media has really kind of showed us that we're not alone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, when I first had my first surgery in 2013, and my first ostomy, um, and I'll get into how many I've had and all that. um, Yeah, I just remember feeling like, I just felt so alone. And I felt so ashamed. I didn't want anyone to know. And I just sort of shut myself off. And you know, it was a very different experience that time around than other times in the future. Again, I'll get into all that eventually here, but um, just to say that it makes a huge, huge difference to have support and to know that you're not the only one dealing with what you're dealing with and to find tips and tricks from other people is just such a big deal. So, yeah, it, it really is. It really is. So, so let's get into let's it. Let's do it. Um, so, yeah. So your first <laughs> ostomy was in 2013. So what, yes. what let you, what led you into having an ostomy? Yeah. So I think it's important to sort of mention a little bit of my backstory because it'll sort of mm-hmm. inform what I say going forward, which is I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in around 2005. Um, and I, at the time was a circus performer. So I was an aerialist in the circus and I was teaching and traveling with circuses and doing all sorts of, you know, high level athletic things with my body. And so when ostomy surgery was first brought into my life about five years after that, I was like, no way. (laughs) I am not doing this. Absolutely not. This is going to ruin my life. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so the first, but anyway, eventually things with ulcerative colitis for me, unfortunately progressed to the place where I was in an emergency situation. It was take out the colon or probably don't survive. I was incredibly sick, you know, in the ICU, all the things. Um, And so when I had that surgery, that first time, it was just a, you know, again, like a real, a real game changer. It was a, it was the whole shift in identity of like who I was as this aerialist to, you know, who I was going to be now. So that's sort of how things started Mm -hmm. yeah so that that must have been such a hard mental shift for you in that moment um can you walk us through can you walk us through that that mental part yeah for sure I mean I wasn't you know it's funny because my family was with me through this process my my mother and my father and my stepmother And because I was so sick going into surgery, I don't remember too much of that time. I was kind of like in and out of consciousness, not really fully um, present. But 
the things they told me afterwards was, for example, I had, I must have been going through a real mental struggle because they told me that I had each of them um, privately write what they would do on a piece of paper and like seal it up so no one else could see their each other's answers and hand them to me. So I think like that mental process for me, uh, from what I gather, was just very fraught. I really didn't know what to do. I really mm -hmm. didn't want to have this surgery. I really didn't um, want to lose my colon. I was just, I guess, in a lot of turmoil about it. But um, it just came to the point where I, I think I had a moment where I realized, like, I'm probably not going to live. This is probably mm -hmm. just not it's not a choice anymore. Um, so eventually I did make that decision to have my colon removed and have a, the first time an end ileostomy. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's how that first part went down. And so when they did it, was it reversible? Was it, did they leave your large intestine in? Did they just kind of? No. So I had a complete and total colectomy. They left mm -hmm. a small rectal cuff. Um, my plan when I first went to surgery was I am going to have a J pouch. That is my, this is mm -hmm. going to be, you know, I'm just going to go through this. And so for anyone that doesn't know, a J pouch is a sort of a form of an ostomy in a way it's an internal ostomy. Um, mm -hmm. so it's just a pouch that they make out of your small intestine. It's connected most of the time to a very small piece of the rectum, the bottom part or the anus. And then that becomes an internal reservoir for holding waste and you use the bathroom similarly to how someone with a colon would, but usually a lot more frequently. Um, so that was my plan. I was doing this first surgery and then I was gonna do the second surgery and then I was gonna do the third surgery. It was like this three-step process. I really had these blinders on, like this is just something I have to get through. My surgeon was very like, you'll be back to doing aerials and performing in no time. You know, I really had this like, I don't want this to be true for me. This isn't reality kind of, yeah. you know, kind of mindset. And I kind of just like hold myself away for the, it was a total of eight months the first time. So like four months between the first surgery and the second surgery, and then four months between the second and the third. Um, and in terms of, you know, adjusting to life with an ostomy, I did, but I really was very secluded. I just mostly stayed at home. It was really just all about like getting through what I perceived was going to be this temporary situation um, mm -hmm. in the beginning, which is not what turned, <laughs> which is not what turned out to be, of course, uh, better laid plans. But that's sort of how I was thinking about this. I wasn't very accepting of what I was going through at the time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people listening can relate to that. It's, yeah. I think we've, we've all felt that same way. Like, no, no, don't want this. It's not going to happen. Very few people, well, unless their pain is so severe, they're like, get, you know, yes, I want this. Right. Um, all right. So you go through this whole thing. Um, you have your first surgery in 2013. You're getting ready to have, you know, your next surgeries. What, ha what goes on there? So the first surgical trifecta, the first three mm -hmm. surgeries was pretty seamless. I had some complications and some struggles along the way. Um, I also learned, unfortunately, the importance of a um, ostomy nurse, a WOCN. I had a really mm -hmm. terrible experience with that the first time. Like I really had no guidance, nobody to help me with skin issues. A lot of times what I was told was, you're just gonna have to suffer, like literally those words. Um, those actual words, which is sort of surprising to hear from a healthcare professional. <laughs> yes. And that's not how it really is. So no, no. I mean, I really had this mentality of, I just have to suffer. You know, this is just something I have to suffer through. This is this horrible thing that's happened to me. I had a lot of issues with, I mean, the first ostomy I had was an end ileostomy, which I didn't know at the time was a lot easier to manage than the second one I had, which was a loop ileostomy. So mm -hmm. the difference for anyone listening that doesn't know is it's the end of the intestine versus they take a loop and slice a hole in it. So it just functions differently. Um, so the end, I didn't have too many problems, but once I had the loop, you know, I had skin issues and leakage and lots of stuff, I sort of got to the point where I was afraid to leave my house because I didn't feel confident in that I wouldn't have a leak. And, you know, I, I couldn't, I wore overalls exclusively because I just couldn't find clothing that was working for me. Um, and I, again, I didn't have any support. I didn't know mm -hmm. there was an online community. I was too ashamed and embarrassed to even seek one out. 
And the only person I had form of contact was, was with this nurse who really was like, this is temporary for you. Just suck it up <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so, that's so, that's so <laughs> awful. That is so awful. Just, I know. Yeah. That just is suck so it awful. up, you know, my, yep. so I was awful. I mean, it really was. My skin was a mess. Like I was having leaks pretty regularly. I just wasn't leaving the house. I was, you know, my only goal was to like gain enough weight back to have this next surgery. It was a very like blinders on um, procedure, these first couple surgeries for sure. But it must've been very lonely. I mean, you yeah. had to have been very lonely. Think because you're secluding yourself in your home, you're not going out, you're not socializing, you're, that must've been difficult. Like, how did you, did you just get through it because you had blinders on? Like, I just need to eat food. I just need to gain weight. I don't care about anything else. I'm just going to get this done. Yeah. For that sure. was what you threw? A hundred percent. And you know, it was just like, I had come from this life where I was a high level athlete. I mean, I was mm -hmm. training, I was performing at the Metropolitan Opera I was doing all of the, my entire community was around athletics. You know, it was my students that I taught. It was the people that I was training with. And that's really before this, how I socialized. I would see people when I was training and we'd go out and whatever. Um, and I couldn't do any of that anymore. So I really didn't have access to that self that I was. It was this. Mm -hmm. And while those people were lovely, I was also 33 years old living in New York City I didn't, I wasn't married or anything like that. And so no one really understood what I was going through. They couldn't even possibly compare it to anything. So my friends were supportive and kind and reaching out and everything, but I just could, I felt so like an alien really. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I just, I just didn't know what to do with this trauma essentially. And it had all happened relatively quickly. You know, it was a very, the last flare up I had with ulcerative colitis was severe and fast moving. Um, you know, it was a, a month, I lost 40 pounds in a month. I was having fevers of 104 degrees. It was just a rapid decline. So it was, it was all so sudden and so fast that I feel like I just was in survival mode. I was just like, all right, the surgeon said, I just have to get through these surgeries and then I'll be able to get back to my life. So it was almost like I just decided like to just, to just turn off <laughs> myself and get through this and not right. really engage. Right. And so that was 2013. And mm -hmm. so you went through your surgeries. Mm -hmm. How, how did that, you know, you went from an, an end ileostomy to a loop ileostomy to get ready for your J pouch. Mm -hmm. How did, how did that go? How did the J pouch surgery go? Yeah. So that's where things get interesting. Mm -hmm. So I had this expectation that I'd have the J pouch and I wouldn't be in pain anymore and everything would be great. And it was so mm -hmm. not, it was not that experience. Unfortunately, there are many people out there that do have that experience. So that's wonderful. And I truly am so happy that that's the truth. But my experience was, it was just kind of a nightmare. I was in constant pain. I was having, you know, going to the bathroom still like 15 times a day. Um, and just, really not ha like it wasn't good you know still tons of belly pain and inflammation and blood and all of the things that I had surgery to hopefully help um right. and my surgeon and doctors were just like yeah just give it time you know like they were trying but like no there weren't really an any answers and that went on for three years and I was constantly seeking I was just sort of constantly seeking a solution. Like there's gotta be something to do. It really consumed my whole life. Like there's gotta be a way to get better. I tried any sort of alternative medicine I could find, acupuncture, you know, diet. I, I've been on every single diet that a human can do. Right. <laughs> right. right. Well, I, most I of us think have been we on all every, have. Single, every single diet you could possibly name. Have you tried the, yes, you don't even know yes. what it is. We've, it's all, it's, we've tried them all. I yeah. decided I'm not, I'm not dieting anymore. I'm Me just, neither. I'm, no more I'm, diets. No more <laughs> diets. I totally agree. Couldn't agree more. So every diet, you know, and I was just like, constant searching 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 and I kept going back to my surgeon saying like this isn't right like something doesn't feel right I could I, I kept saying that for three years I just kept saying something feels wrong and finally in 2017 um, I met a new surgeon who had came from the Cleveland Clinic and moved to New York and NYU mm -hmm. and he said I hear you and something is wrong and did a bunch of scans and tests and more diagnostics. You know, we've all had all the unpleasant yep. diagnostics. 
and said, your pouch is twisted 180 degrees. So basically the enti my entire intestine was rotated. So I used to say it felt like Tetris when, when I ate, like do, 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 you know, like things were okay. going through, right? Um, that, yeah. And like, and I could actually sometimes see it. Like I could see my belly do all sorts of strange Tetris movements. Um, and he said, yeah, it's twisted. There's a kink in your intestine. So things aren't going through properly, which is causing gas and bloating and indigestion and, and frequent bowel movements and all of these things. So I was faced with another decision, which was three more surgeries <laughs> mm -hmm. and another period with uh, an ostomy. So, and I really didn't want to do it. I, I, I think it took me four months to make that decision this time. Um, it was kind of like, is the hell I'm in <laughs> going to be better than this perceived unknown hell? And, you know, there's right. more there's more risk when you do a J pouch redo is a pretty rare surgery. This, this guy is pretty much the only one who does them. Maybe they're more common now, but, um, it was risky. It's, you know, X, Y, and Z could happen and much more mm -hmm. risk than the first time around because you're kind of messing with something again. Right. Um, but in the end, I just decided I have to try and improve my quality of life. Um, and so I did went back into back into surgery. I went and had a very this is where things really shifted I had a very different experience with an ostomy this time. Um, I started an Instagram account called mm -hmm. Cody VIBD, <laughs> which doesn't exist anymore. It's morphed, but um, I started connecting with other people with ostomies. Um, you know, I got in in you know, interested in what was going on and how I could improve my quality of life, how I could help other people. That was a big change mm -hmm. for me. I started saying like, okay, how can this experience help someone else? Instead of me, 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 like, what can I do to help other people? And that mm -hmm. really shifted my mentality. Um, and I got, you know, I started working with a company um, that did patient advocacy for people, new people going through ostomy surgery. And that was really amazing. Um, and that's something that has continued on. So yeah, it was a really different experience the second time around. So now you have the second surgeries, you're in your J pouch. Um, you don't have, you know, you're not in an, well, you're in a different type of an ostomy, right, an right. internal ostomy. Right. Um, and things are going great. Now, have you gotten back into, um, did you get back into your sports? Did you are you still teaching it? What are you doing now? No. So, you know, it wasn't so smooth sailing the second time around mm -hmm. either. After surgeries, I still have, I had different issues to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. And so I am, um, you know, one thing about me is that I'm persistent and I don't give up. So mm -hmm. I just was back, went right back into seeking mode and Mm -hmm. all the different modalities that I could finally could, could get my hands on. And through that, I, I learned that I really was passionate about health. I was able to sort of shift my mindset from, oh, I'm obsessed with trying to feel better to wait a minute, this is something that I actually enjoy. I enjoy mm -hmm. researching, I enjoy, you know, testing things out. So I went to school and I became a certified health coach. And since then, which, I went to IIN. The first time I, I went, did that. Yes, I did that first. And then I um, now yep. have done two additional certifications, actually three. Um, with holistic health educators, um, their mm -hmm. program. I'm a certified emotion code practitioner, and I'm studying right now to be a RTT coach and a feng shui practitioner as well. So I really kind of threw myself into wellness and and what mm -hmm. it means to be well and healing the trauma of these surgeries. You know, I realized that a lot of this was my mindset, and a lot of this mm -hmm. was how I was thinking about my circumstance. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, now I feel great. I never went back to circus. I let that go. Mm -hmm. um, but that's okay. It was, it was a different, it was a decision now this time. It wasn't something that I was like forced to do, which is what it felt like in 2013. But I just felt complete. I felt really satisfied with that career. It was amazing. Um, and I'm, ex you know, really happy and excited and passionate about what I'm doing now. So all is well. <laughs> I love that. No, I love that. And we have so much in common when it comes to that. Cause I am mindset, health, nutrition, workout junkie. Like I, and it's not a, just about me. Like I'm always like, well, what's next? Well, what does this, mm -hmm. well, how does this work? Well, mm -hmm. what does this do to you, buddy? And all my friends are now coming to me. They're going, so tell me a little bit more about this. Or I'd post a book and they're like, 
can you give me the cliff notes? Like, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I did, I was doing health coaching as a, as a career for quite a while and I got myself away from it a bit, but, um, but I hear, I hear you. And I, and you know what, isn't it great how you start something for yourself? Like you were on your own road to discovery and yeah. now yeah. all those things that you learned, you can share with other people. Oh right. God, so yes. And how different each one of us are. Like not one thing is the same for any, any one of us. No. And at first I was really, you know, I was hesitant. I wanted to work with people on anything but gut health. I was like, no, mm -hmm. I will not do that. <laughs> and just recently, actually, I said, you know what? This is ridiculous. I know so mm -hmm. much about gut health. I've gone through so many things with my own health. I've learned so much. I've researched so much. Mm -hmm. I've tried so much. I've I said, this is, I have to help other people. What am I doing? And that, you know, it's, it's a shift that I'm sure you can relate to of just embracing it, like embracing mm -hmm. your body as it is. It's not that I would want this to happen. Like if someone gave me the choice, I wouldn't choose this, but I am at peace with it. And I am in acceptance and I do think my body is amazing and I do love my body. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am, ex you know, I'm never going to stop. Like wellness has just become some, a passion of mine, which I'm, sh I'm sure mm -hmm. you can relate to. I'm always mm -hmm. going to be trying new things and what can I do and testing my limits and getting uncomfortable and going back to what works and all of these things. So mm -hmm. it's just become a real mindset shift for me of really just embracing the lack of perfection and knowing that that doesn't exist and that I can use my experience and my passion to help other people. I don't have to like hide and pretend, you know, and I'd be ashamed of my body. And like, you know, for a long time, a story that I had in my head was that I failed, right? I, I couldn't mm -hmm. heal myself. Like all those people that, you know, well, you didn't take this pill, this pill healed me. And it's like, yes, I probably did take the pill and it didn't heal me. And that's okay. You know? Right. Um, but that was a, that's something I really had to get over when I started working with other people was feeling like I'd failed and who would want to listen to me and who would want to take my advice and who can I help, you know? Oh yeah. I, <laughs> yes, I get that. I get that. I, I truly get that. It's like, cause I mean, I used to do fitness competitions mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden my body after, you know, I, I mean, I have my ostomy because of cancer and I went through mm -hmm. all this stuff and my body just did this thing that went from 128 pounds fit in a size zero two to 165 pounds in a size eight in the matter of about a year. And mm. I couldn't get it down. And I'm like, how can I even talk fitness and health to anybody when I have no clue what's going on with my body? Who's going to listen to me when they see me get, I gained over 30, I gained 35 pounds in a very short amount of time. Well, that was my body saying, Hey, something's wrong. Yeah. Everything's a mess. Let's get adjusted. Give it time. And okay. Okay. Yeah. Like instead of fighting your body, it's like oh, listening to your body. Like you're right. What's wrong. You're right. What's wrong. What can calm this down? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you gotta give your, you, we gotta give our bodies more credit than we do for what, what it does for us. Yeah. And I, you know, I think there are some people out there that want to work with somebody that's like got it all together and is like, you know, quote unquote, the perfect body and like, you yeah. know, all that stuff. But there are also people out there that that really need to work with someone that gets it, that anything mm -hmm. that, you know, the thing that I think a lot of my clients like about me is that they can say anything to me mm -hmm. and I'm probably going to be like, yeah, been there, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can really yeah. relate. So I think this kind of speak, ser searching, I can't speak, searching for some perfect guru that has all the answers um, and, and will just instruct you in exactly what they did to get to this, you know, perfection is, is something that's shifting like you mm -hmm. know people are individual and everyone has a different path to wellness and it can look different for everybody every single day and so I, that's another reason why I'm so passionate like you can be super healthy and have an ostomy or a day pouch it, it doesn't mean that you're broken or damaged forever it's just a, mm -hmm. a different configuration <laughs> it's yep it definitely is it definitely yeah. is it was um, when I had cancer um, the doctors would run all my blood work and they were, they were like, you were the healthiest cancer patient we've ever seen. Right. Cause I was still working out. I was still doing all, you know, not even that, but my blood work was perfect. They're like, right. you were the healthiest cancer patient that we don't, I'm like, well, then I don't understand what's going on. Like, I don't get that, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, and then you search for your answers and, um, but yeah. So are you still in New York? 
Yeah, I moved from New York City to Long Island. Um, okay. And loving life in the suburbs. And yeah, that's where we're at. We're in uh, the North Shore of Long Island. I still have to remember where I live. We just moved in, in uh, November. But yeah, I live in the North Shore of Long Island with my husband and my dog. Um, and we're about to actually hit the road in a van. So I'm going to be testing J Pouch life in a van. <laughs> to be interesting. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So where are you guys planning on going? How long are you going to go for? We're going for like a month to six weeks. We're not fully sure, but uh, we're heading west. Our first stop is a festival in Las Vegas. And um, from there, we're going to go to California. My, my passion that I discovered after having surgery um, was surfing. Because, you know, I just always have to do something that involves an uncomfortable unitard. So from mm -hmm. circus to circus, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it has to involve something incredibly uncomfortable on your body. Um, but yeah, I love surfing so much. It's something that really actually eventually got me through a lot of what I went through. Um, and so we'll head to California and do some surfing and we'll see. But I'm excited to see... Um, you know, I feel like I've shifted from being afraid. I would have never done these things a few years ago. I was way too afraid. You know, going away was like, absolutely not. No. Um, but now I'm just sort of excited to see what I can do with my body and what limits I uh, can push against and the comforts that I have at home and how I can mm -hmm. sort of deal with it. I'm sure you can relate having just been away in a different country <laughs> for a <Yep>. long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very interesting. It was like, did I pack enough? My first thing is like, how I got to pack all the supplies. So you have your J pouch. Mine was, I have to pack enough supplies right. um, to get me through a month. And what if I run out? What do I oh do? My God. You know, yeah. Yeah. That, that whole situation. Um, so what are some of the things that you have done you know so 2017 was the end of your other surgery so mm -hmm. we're what six years later five years yeah. five years later um you know what are some of the things that you've done like you said you, you found surfing is something that you love you've studied nutrition and, and all of that what are some yeah. other things that you've done I think the biggest shift for me was actually in the last year and a half was when I had ulcerative colitis some practitioners would say like how is your stress levels and I'd always want to I was so angry. Like, I was like, this has nothing to do with stress. I refuse to look at the connection. Um, and this last year and a half, I put so much focus on my mindset and on healing mm -hmm. trauma. Going through an illness and surgery is traumatic. It just is. Um, I don't think there's anyone that goes through anything like you or I that, um, that doesn't come out with some level of trauma. And so I paid a lot of attention to reprogramming my mind, um, spending more time meditating, different techniques, the emotion code, which is something I got certified in, um, has been incredibly helpful. It's a way mm -hmm. to find and clear trapped emotions in the body. I've done some brain training. Um, the other course I'm doing right now is a hypnosis-like technique. So really mm -hmm. focusing on working with my mind, working with my emotions, regulating my nervous system. Um, I used to not be able to sleep through the night and I started sleeping through the night a few months ago. And I attribute that to my nervous system calming down. You know, mm -hmm. I was stuck in this state of hypervigilance and fight or flight and what's going to go wrong next, you know, from 20. 2020 was the last time I was in the hospital. And before that, I hadn't made it a full year without being hospitalized for some sort of complication. Every single year, at least once a year, I was in the hospital. So I was always afraid that something was going to go wrong. And now it's almost been it's almost been two years, which is really exciting for me <laughs> Yay! Without, without being hospitalized. And um, I attribute that really to working with my nervous system and understanding mm -hmm. that that aspect. I feel like it's so common to get so focused on the area, right? Like, how do I heal my gut? How do I heal my gut? And mm -hmm. I had to sort of let that go and, and really like, okay, how do I heal my mind now? How do I heal myself from this trauma? How do I find love for my body again? And how do I calm my nervous system down? So on a practical level, I work with a naturopathic doctor. I do a lot of self healing, you know, based on my interests and all the things that I'm certified in and and that's kind of been a huge, huge game changer for me. That is awesome. That is, that is awesome. And I know when, before we hang up, I want to get those couple of courses because now here's me. Yeah. 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 Um, so what, what are some of the things? So if we have a listener who's going yeah. through all this, right. Cause mm -hmm. we all do that. What are a couple of things that, you know, what are two, what are three or four things that you can tell them to do to help 
regulate their, their mm -hmm. central nervous system or, you know, to help them get through some trauma things. What are a couple yes. of things that they can do on their own? Absolutely. I have a couple of very easy, accessible things. The first one is, um, is called EFT, which I'm sure mm -hmm. you've heard of emotional freedom technique. It's a form of mm -hmm. tapping, which works with the, the mind and also the acupressure points on the body. If you just Google EFT, there's a ton of free resources. There's a man named Brad Yates, Y-A-T-E-S on YouTube, who has a video for everything. So let's say you're, you know, um, EFT for sleep and you just push, punch it into YouTube. Brad Yates will lead you through a 10 minute tapping for sleep. That's an amazing resource for someone. Um, the other thing I would say, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, is box breathing. So anything, any kind of breath work is going to be good. I only say box breathing because it's so easy and so easy to explain on a podcast, which is mm -hmm. you just breathe in for, let's say four, hold your breath for four, breathe out mm -hmm. for four, hold your breath for four. So those are some just simple techniques. And then on a macro level, it's really about taking intentional time and letting these things become habits. I do, I have sort of like a book ending of my day. Like I start my day with some sort of meditation, journaling, tapping, whatever it is I'm doing in that moment. And I end my day that way. So no matter what happens throughout the day, I'm calming my nervous system. I'm regulating my nervous system in the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. I also love utilizing our amazing smartphones for this, mm -hmm. setting an alarm that goes off four times a day, which might be annoying at first, but that just says breathe. And every time your alarm goes off, just take a minute, put your hand on your heart and take three deep breaths. It's really about these, for me, these small moments. It's not some big change that you have to make, but it's just like, I'm committing to peace. I'm committing to calm. I'm committing to letting my nervous system calm down and doing that every single day over and over and over again for really months will start mm -hmm. to make a big change. And I love how you said you begin your day and you end, the, end your day at the same, doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and you do that for a while. So it's not like, you know, I'm going to meditate this morning. I'll tap tonight. Right. I'll, um, you know, do yoga tomorrow instead, or I'll journal. It's like, pick the one thing. Yeah. And just do, or breathing, right? Just right. pick the one thing and do that thing multiple times, you know, a couple of times, once or twice a day, three times a day, whatever it is, and stick with that for a long period of time. Like stick yeah. with that for, for weeks, you know, yeah. until you feel like, okay, I want to add something in, or I want to change it up a little bit. A hundred percent. And really just prioritizing yourself. And for some people that mm -hmm. might mean finding a coach, finding, mm -hmm. you know, someone to work with that can help them with this because if your nervous system is stuck in fight or flight, which so many of us are stuck in a sympathetic state, sometimes you really need help to get out at first. It's not mm -hmm. such an easy shift, um, but so much will improve when you do make that shift. And like you said, it doesn't have to be this big life shattering change. It can just right. be five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night. Um, and just taking that time to start yourself off in a certain way and to wind down. Um, I mean, there's a million other things we could talk for hours about mm -hmm. all the ways <laughs> and the challenges of modern life um, <laughs> that yep. want our attention. But I think for me, it's all about, you know, anyone that I work with, I, I really try and make it really simple and really um, a lifestyle because I just like I'm not into diets, I'm not into big changes that feel mm -hmm. like, um, like they're bumping up against needing to be perfect, right? It's all about living our lives, doing our best, and just learning how to love ourselves and learning how to mm -hmm. care for ourselves. Yep. Yeah, it's so, so important. Yeah. So Cody, if people want to find you, mm -hmm. where is the best, where is the best place for them to go? I would say the best place to find me is probably Instagram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always there. It's Cody, um, my whole name, Cody Mar, C O D Y M A H E R, the number 18. And that's me on Instagram. I do have a website, it's agencywellness.org. Um, it's under construction, but you'll be prompted to send me an email. So that's really easy as well. That's awesome. All right, yeah. guys. And I'll also put that in the show notes too. You know, Cody, I have loved having you on here. And like you said a little while ago, like we could talk for hours and hours yeah. and hours about so <laughs> many different things uh, because we have the same mindset when it comes to all of this yes. um, and the same tra and the same training is going through, which I love. Mm -hmm. So um, if you were to leave the listeners with one thing, like the mm -hmm. most important thing you think 
what would that one thing be? Just take it slow. And when things get chaotic, just zoom out, take a breath, say I'm okay right now, and just just take it slow. You know, we don't have to change in a, in a day and we can live, we can be okay wherever we're at, no matter what state your health is at, you can have a moment to feel okay. If we're still alive, we're okay. And that's kind of my motto. It's like, I'm still alive. I'm, there's some part of me that's okay. Um, so when things get really chaotic, just, just finding a way to just feel okay for a moment can be really helpful. I love that. That yeah. was beautiful. Well, Cody, thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank this you week. so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, we'll definitely have to do it again. Like you said, hundred we'll, percent. We'll have some, we have so much to talk about. So we'll be totally. bringing you guys some more right, between Cody and I, we'll make a plan. Yes, definitely. <laughs> All right. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us this week. If you enjoyed this podcast, get the behind the scenes at leannehayden.com slash ostomy updates. And also, if you found this episode encouraging, please screenshot it and share it on Instagram. And don't forget to tag me and also the person who was on the episode with me. I occasionally will do special gifts for anyone who does do a screenshot and share it on Instagram or in your stories. Also, lastly, please go to Apple or Google, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast to keep up with them every single week. I enjoy you guys. Thank you so much for being here.